Welcome everyone to Playboy uh, March 1959 um, we have the cover for this issue is quite bright but um, not particularly flattering I wouldn't say um, I'm not sure what's going on here with this model I guess it's kind of just a improvisation but we have uh, some other nice features in the magazine for this month one thing I should say um, from the outset is that in many of the issues I've pointed out that Jack Cole um, was featuring lots of cartoons in the magazine. I forgot to mention in August 1958 that Jack Cole actually uh, committed suicide in that year. Um, so he wasn't able to obviously contribute any further. I think there are some cartoons which Playboy had found um, and they obviously took some from his archive and, and published those. But I think going forward, we probably won't see as many uh, as to be expected uh, if he's obviously committed suicide and he has a limited back catalogue of what they could publish. So we'll probably start seeing some new cartoonists uh, coming through. So we'll get straight to the first article. Uh, just came through lots of ads there seems to be lots of um adverts for musical equipment electro voice which you'll know Harmon Carden a record cut I've never heard of but um you may have if you're I guess if you're in America we have um no no particularly new adverts but this they're, they're cramming them in obviously you can see all these ones here sort of going uh, vertically um so a huge amount of adverts coming through and obviously in the last issue I pointed out that there was these huge back covers pointing out who the Playboy uh, readers are and what their kind of statistics are that kind of thing what kind of money they earn this one's quite interesting here uh, Britishers wear them all year round and kind of pointing out that the sort of British uh, fashion um, but this will start changing I think as we head into the 60s although the swing in 60s was kind of founded you know in the UK and it kind of went on to influence lots of other countries but it was a big thing in London and it gradually caught on around and there was obviously some crossover as well between different fashions between those eras. So let's just have a quick look. Um, nothing really to see in this first part, just huge amounts of adverts. I think it's like 22 pages of adverts before we actually get to an article. But we have The Noise uh, and this is by Ken Purdy, who you remember has written for the magazine before. A uh, nice little cartoon here with these kind of abstract images and then obviously this gentleman here is looking at the only kind of complete one, I should say, in his drawer. I'm um, not sure the artist R. Taylor, I think he's featured before, but I can't, can't remember off the top of my head. Leonard Lyons, who's written for the magazine before, Names in Lights, a uh, little article here, The Battle for Billing on Broadway. Obviously it's a competition about the um, different plays and actors and everyone trying to get into Broadway obviously it's a huge competition fashion foot we have Blake Rutherford and we have all the different types of shoes that you can see here um, many sort of styles that I don't know of but quite varied in style obviously those with buckles and kind of Oxford style uh, brogues and, and everything else that you see here these are kind of um, almost like tap shoes or so it looks like to me but it might just be the shadow here uh, small cartoons there I love you Miss Irvine boy by John Wallace and you'll be familiar with him obviously Silverstein in Spain you'll be familiar with him going around the country I think he has already been to Spain I do remember a bullfighting issue which is obviously very popular in um, Spain but some nice little illustrations here and all the usual adventures uh, John Dempsey who's featured quite a lot and you'll remember his cartoons John Sack as well on travel uh, you'll remember that um, he's been going different places as well um, throughout the magazines and he's gone I think the last two to different locations around the world. This cartoon here Eric Sokol again he's featuring a lot more seems to have taken the place of um, Jack Cole in a way probably because it's a very similar style of cartoon if you remember that kind of um, Indian ink style quite a washed out sort of look. Audrey Dastin is the um, playmate of the month and Audrey Daston, she actually um, married in 1953 a basketball player called uh, James H. Brown, UCLA, uh, was who he played for and he went on to become a, a TV producer, made a couple of shows as well. Uh, she's actually still alive now, um, I think she's something like 83 if I can remember off the top of my head. But a short pictorial for the Playmate of the Month, nothing too risque in there. And then we have Gayanne Wilson who returns with this, um, as I said before, this kind of very dystopian uh, outworldly sort of cartoons and this is one of them obviously they always kind of features something where the planet is kind of under attack or it's made to look quite small or feeble and then you see it again in this cartoon where these are like little bugs or ants crawling up this 
rock. So that's a common feature of his cartoons. Um, stereo has arrived, and this is um, obviously a particular technology that's come through at this time. And then we have this pictorial and article featuring all the new um, appliances that are coming through for the home, some with stands, some standalone, uh, various different technologies. And I've seen some of, the, some of these styles before, mainly in kind of antique shops and junk shops, to be honest. So technology goes very quickly. But if you're an audiophile, some of this might be quite interesting for you. Um, some more little cartoons here. We have Ray Russell's uh, Skin of Silk and Eyes of Fire. So portrait of a 19th century dandy. Um, the horror of it all, and this is uh, Hollis Alpert and Charles Beaumont. You'll remember Charles Beaumont is a very popular writer. Um, so you'll uh, remember all of that. And then we have the classic figure, and this is a little pictorial. Um, and this is a lady who's featured in the magazine before, if you remember. I'm just trying to remember her name, June Blair. But in here, it says June Bear, and I think that is a print issue because I cannot find anyone called June Bear, but I do remember June Blair. So I would assume that that is the name that it was meant to be. And this is about the classic the classic figure and the, uh, the sort of poses and feminine beauty and all that kind of thing. So some nice photography in there. And then we have, uh, I think this is our Steen, if I remember uh, the signature correctly. Um, lots of cartoons. I think he's been in pretty much every single one for the last few months. Spring Caper. And this is about, this is the attire and capes again, which again don't feature. And as I said before, I'd like to see capes return. I think capes look good, but um, it would be weird if you walked around in one now, unless you're kind of a farmer and you have one of those uh, capes on. Uh, some more cartoons. The Renault Dolph Dolphine again, um, which used to feature at the start of the magazine, you remember, and now it's gone to a slightly more in-depth um, sort of advert. Not sure how well that sold. I should look that up one day to see how popular that was. Um, not too much else. We're getting very close to the end. Um, not much in here. Lots of more ads, golf and shoes, fashion and uh, lots of junk, if I'm honest. <laughs> um, lots of things that have been sold in there. All these kind of gimmicky things, as I said, from the 50s. You have to remember this is a big consumerist boom going on lots of things being made manufactured that post-war boom so lots of odd things being made but we're almost done for this month and this is uh, an advert that's been in there before when this son of oil capital and um, this is a weird advert i think um, particularly if you were to see it now but um one of those things and then we have these handsome leather shoes i'm not sure who these are made by let's have a quick look Leather Industries of America. Not sure which particular brand that is, but never mind. But we're starting to see lots more um, shoes and uh, clothing coming through in the adverts. Reasonable issue, but I really hate the front cover. So we'll leave it there and I'll see you for the next issue, which will be April 1959, uh, most likely be on Friday. And I'll see you then.